What is a seemingly harmless parenting mistake that will majorly freak up a child later in life? Story 1. Treating crying as if it's something only weak people do. My dad in particular used to yell at me for crying, which only made me cry more, which made him yell more. And you get the point. In high school, I tried to bring up the possibility of me having anxiety problems that I'd spoken to the school counselor about because my friends made me go since they were worried. He just told me I was a drama queen. I can't express that I'm anxious or stressed around my dad because others have it worse. Even now I'm 21 and seeing a psychiatrist in a couple weeks because I've just felt so bad lately and I would never let my dad know. I think I'd rather die than my dad knowing I've been seeing a psychiatrist and discussing the possibility of me having OCD with said psychiatrist, which does explain a lot and is actually kind of comforting for me to know because he'd get so mad at me for being weak. I grew up the exact same way, but I was treated like this by my mother. I especially remember once when I was six, we went grocery shopping and she told me not to ask for anything at the store. So we got our groceries and we were leaving the store and I spotted a little ice cream stand. So I asked if she could buy me a lime ice pop and the next thing I knew my mouth was bleeding. She had slapped me so hard on my mouth that she busted my lip. I remember being so confused because we weren't in the store anymore and I hadn't asked for anything in the store. The ice cream stand was outside of the store. Anyways, I immediately start crying and freaking out seeing blood. So she pulled me into a little alleyway where there's no one around and starts to slap me, pull my hair, laughing that I'm freaked out by blood, taunting me and says that the only way she's gonna stop is if I stop crying because crying is for weak people. I remember biting my already busted lips so hard to stop myself from sobbing and I just covered my face with my hair the whole way home. That was the last time I cried in front of her until about three weeks ago. I'm 21 now. But let me tell you that crying, letting my feelings spill out in front of her was definitely one of the hardest and most empowering things I have ever done. Giving in to basic human emotion is not weak. Seeking help is not weak. I don't know you, but I'm extremely proud of you for seeking help and I'm so sorry you've had to go through this. Edit, thank you so much for the silver, kind stranger. And to everyone being so kind and understanding in the comments. Jesus Christ, that's horrible. I really hope you're doing better now. No one deserves to be treated like that, especially not by a parent. People like that should not be allowed to have children. Story 2. Saying, I don't care who started it. I grew up with friends whose siblings would target the one with the bad temper, provoke them into a rage, then cry and play victim when they got slapped. In this case, it does matter who started it. A parent has to make it clear that violence isn't okay, but neither is provoking someone into said violence. It doesn't matter that said person never hit or kicked while their sibling did. They never would have gotten hurt in the first place if they didn't encourage the aggression to begin with. Children are clever and will find loopholes in their parents' rules. Parents need to be better and snuff out that kind of BS when it starts. If they don't, They'll raise a manipulator and a scapegoat. One will use them, and one will resent them. It's a lose-lose, all of a simple rule. My parents always told me that they didn't care about justice, they cared about peace and quiet, and life isn't fair. So I believed them. So since life wasn't fair, and all they cared about was peace and quiet, I didn't tell them things or ask for help. I was afraid to yell for help when I was stuck on the porch for hours. They like to tell this as a funny story now. LOL, what a dumb kid. But it's awful for me, because I just remember being stuck and in pain, and yet too scared of my own parents to call for help. There was no point in telling them things either, like being assaulted. And now as an adult, my parents are like, Oh, but we just wanted you to be quiet and we didn't mean it. No, you did mean it. That's exactly what you meant and that's exactly what you said. You wanted me to be quiet. No matter what, quiet. That was the only thing that was important to you. Wow, I really hope they eventually got to get everything off their chest to their parents. All those years of being quiet couldn't have done them good mentally. Story 3 the saddest part of this question is that my mom has done so many things that everyone is saying is bad. Not hugging, praising, telling me to suck it up, etc. So let me give one that I feel would have helped me out growing up. Don't be afraid to admit when you were wrong or when you made mistakes to your child. My parents would go out of their way to justify any mistake they made and make it seem as if they were right no matter what the situation was. Gave me a pretty messed up view of right and wrong, as well as learning from mistakes, but was fixed by my grandma. It's a long story that I don't want to get into right now. Edit, wow, 11k in silver on my first ever comment, and it pertains to my terrible childhood. Thank you. But on a serious note, I want to reiterate the importance of not only advice, but the consequences of not taking said advice. Example, my parents never congratulated me on good grades, doing the right thing, etc. They would only say, that's what you're supposed to do, or you better keep it up and threaten me if I didn't live up to their expectations. So now, as an adult, I'm insanely suspicious, and at the same time worried of people complimenting me or congratulating me for anything I do. My parents won't ever address anything specifically. They just say we did the best we could with what we had at the time. But they really didn't. But because they're giving that blanket answer that allows room for mistakes but not responsibility, we can't ever talk about it. And sometimes they just flat out lie and reinvent history from my childhood and teenage years to make themselves look better. Sometimes I feel like they really only believe their own read rights. They likely do. It's a feature of human memory. Story 4. Well, realistically, it'd be a helicopter parent. You always want to look out for your kid, right? Make sure they don't do things they're not supposed to. Walk in without knocking, it ruins the relationship with the kid because even though you have a sense of privacy, 
The kid doesn't and would always be paranoid of anyone entering the room without warning. It ruins a kid. Would my mom let me do this? Is she okay with it? My parents were helicopter parents. I was not allowed to lock my bedroom door. My mom listened in on my phone calls. This was in landline phone days. And went through my personal belongings when I wasn't home, including reading the notes that friends and I passed in school. I wasn't allowed to talk to boys or date. I'm female. Doing this only prevents your child from learning how to form healthy relationships. You should teach your children how to do things, such as date, in a safe and responsible manner, rather than ban it. I wasn't allowed to have friends over or go over to other people's houses my entire childhood. Then I turned 18, and my parents were flabbergasted at my inability to socialize and lack of friends. As someone who has seen a lot of helicopter parents, there hasn't been a lot of instances where the kid turned out great. Definitely one of the worst things a parent can do. Story 5. Not following through on your promises. If you told your child you were buying ice cream tomorrow in the hopes that they'd forget, and the next day when they ask you, you tell them no, they'll see you as unreliable. Ice cream is just the first thing that came to my mind. I'm sure someone else can explain better what I'm trying to say here without sounding so ridiculous. I taught my children at very young ages that outside of extreme circumstances, failing to keep a promise made is the same thing as telling a lie. Therefore, I won't make promises to them that I am not absolutely certain I can keep. They learned early in life that I take my promises very seriously and will go to great lengths to honor them. We have hit very hard times recently, and I have had to delay delivery on some promises, which breaks my heart. But they know that I will fulfill those promises eventually, and are much more empathetic and understanding than their peers have been in similar situations. I'm so sorry that you have these memories and this heartbreak. There are people out there that will treat you with the respect you deserve, and remember that you need to be one of those people too. Story 6 I grew up in a very strict Asian household. My parents were very strict on the never wake us up policy. To this day, I get very anxious and refuse to wake people up in fear of being yelled at and locked in a closet. I'm 22 years old. Jesus, locking kids in a closet is cruel. LOL, wow, I'm a different Asian. And I can corroborate that my parents and that dude in the comment above parents are using the same notes because I ended up locked in a closet. And let me tell you, from the perspective of the child, that experience is very scary. It's quite terrifying, and on top of that, you as a kid are aware of your small size and helplessness before anyone bigger than you, basically everyone. So by forcing something, like being placed somewhere you can't escape from, triggers an instant panic response that I don't think grown-ups understand the magnitude of that response and its impacts on the psyche. From the perspective of these parents, the child is merely upset by the punishment. That is where they are horribly wrong, and show that they lack the capacity to empathize with the thoughts and feelings of a child. Edit. This thing is getting a bit more attention than I thought. I want it to be a little more detailed into what happened because just calling it locked in the closet isn't really close to painting an accurate description. I had my hands and feet tied on a child wicker sized chair and I was gagged and placed in an empty bedroom while my folks pretended to leave the apartment. Um, excuse me? That isn't a punishment, that's straight up torture. I hope the guy's doing okay now. Story 7 Telling your kid they are always a winner. We love our kids and want them to feel special, but it's setting them up to be disappointed later in life when they find out that not everyone can win. Let them feel disappointments early on and teach them it's okay. They'll grow up better to handle the stresses of life. I always hated playing games with my younger brother for this reason. It was always, let him win, he's seven years younger. Whenever I get told that with my sisters, I always say, no, I'm not going to let them win. They don't get any better if I just let them. Now my oldest sister can actually beat me sometimes, so it definitely pays off. We definitely gotta stop giving everyone a trophy and telling kids everyone's a winner. It's gonna make it very hard for them to deal with losses later on. Story 8. Using them as props for jokes in public. Glad you got a kick out of it, Dad. My dad challenged me to a drinking contest in front of his friends when I was 16. I'm a tiny petite girl, and because I always wanted to impress him slash make him proud, I agreed. He made me drink Jaeger bombs until I threw up, and took a photo of my face in the bowl and texted it to all of his mates. They were also my work colleagues at the time. Oh, and the first time he ever introduced me to alcohol at 14 years of age, he made me do shots of Sambuca shot for shot with him for some quality time with dad. Mom had to take me to the bathroom to be sick and put me to bed. I recently witnessed a similar mentality at a friend's adult party with a nephew. It felt really awkward as a guest to witness the attitude and I wasn't laughing or approving. This attitude is so bad. I hope you tell your dad not to share photos of you without permission, especially now that you're old enough to speak up. And simply learning to say no is an important skill in life. Good luck. Story 9. Pretty much telling you that whatever activity that you enjoy doing is annoying or dumb. I used to love to sing. I was in choir and would play my favorite songs over and over to learn the words. Not only did my sisters tease me for it, but my parents told me to shut up constantly. So I stopped singing. I must have been terrible, right? I sing when I'm alone or jokingly with some friends, but what really broke me was when I went to visit everyone for the holidays and my sister said that she was surprised I never pursued singing since I seemed to love it so much when I was younger. I nearly started crying and had to bite my tongue so I wouldn't scream at her for being one of the reasons I stopped. 
It's always funny for the ones doing the teasing, but it actually hurts the ones being teased, especially when it's coming from people who are supposed to love you. I won a scholarship for singing when I was in primary school, private lessons twice a week. One day my dad stopped taking me, saying he couldn't afford them anymore. At the time, I didn't know the lessons were already paid for from the scholarship. My a-hole father thought it was lame and the lessons were useless. Man, there's stories of physical and emotional abuse littered all over this post. But this just hurts so much to read. It's such an unnecessarily cruel thing to do. I'm really sorry you had to make these memories. I really hope you can turn it into a positive way of thinking by avoiding this type of behavior at all costs. Best to you. Story 10. Never tell your child that you were wrong and that you're sorry. Just never once occurred. My father never once said sorry to me. He was human. There was plenty of times he should have. My kids have heard from me plenty. Once my brother was sent to his room by my dad after they got into an argument about something stupid. I used Google to prove my brother right and we were both grounded for being disrespectful. Until he found out we were actually right, he never ungrounded us until the week was over and only told me he was wrong. Moral of the story, being right is disrespectful. I remember several occasions when my father would accuse me of doing something I shouldn't have. And a couple of times, I was legitimately innocent, and I would say I didn't do it or some such thing. He'd counter with, are you calling me a liar? And I was pretty much fricked after that. There was no way I was going to get out of whatever punishment was heading my way. Dad was always right, even when he wasn't. That is one of the most frustrating things ever. A lot more people need to learn how to admit when they're wrong. Story 11. Never showing up for events. I remember my parents didn't come for most of my choir concerts. It really sucked to see my classmates' family cheer them on while my parents were absent. Brought home one of my choir program papers to show my parents, and I found it in the trash the next day. I was sad because I wanted to keep it. But seeing it in the trash, I didn't want it anymore. Edit. I love my parents, and I don't blame them for not showing up. They're small business owners, and it was hard for them to find people who could work for them whenever I had concerts or anything. It still hurts though. Also, the replies to this are very sad. I'm sorry that a lot of you guys went through similar experiences. Second edit. Also, my mom is a clean freak. She'll discard or move any stray papers laying around. She probably didn't think much of it. She might have not even realized what it was. She can't read English that well. It's her third language. After I told her, she apologized to me, so it's okay. I thought I should add that my little sister and grandma would come to them, but my relationship with my grandma isn't great. It's just not the same as having your parents there, if that makes sense. That makes a ton of sense. And although they weren't there to cheer you on, I bet they were wherever they were at the time. Story 12. Don't smother your kids. My mom quit having her own life the moment my brother and I were born. He was an incredibly devoted and loving mother and was very kind to us. But when we were both born, she stopped having friends, did not work, and was home every single day from when I was born to the moment I moved out in my early 20s. She was very easily upset because she had no other source of self-esteem, and at any time I screwed up, and I screwed up a lot. It was as if I had levied a very personal attack against her. In the last five years or so before I left, I don't think we had a single conversation that didn't drive her to tears. And I promise I wasn't that bad. I constantly felt concerned and stressed and fell into depression as a defense mechanism. And she took my resulting lack of performance very personally, creating a very treacherous cycle that was only broken when I enlisted and finally got away. To this day, I often feel like I'm a bad person who failed to live up to her love. Holy cow, it's like I wrote this. Sorry to hear you're going through the same thing. I started seeing a counselor, and she really helped me process the issues I have because of my enmeshed family. Story 13. Getting them involved in problems they have no control over. My parents felt the need to keep me in the loop regarding our pending foreclosure and argue in front of me over which one was to blame when I was 10. What possible reason is there to share that with a kid? I barely slept for months. I was convinced the cops were going to bust in at midnight and throw us all outside. On the flip side, let your kids know if the family is facing an eviction. I was the only one home when marshals came. Of course, my situation was more like my dad saying to me, we're going to lose our house because your mother won't pay the bills. Isn't she awful? That kind of stuff should never be put on a kid. I don't understand how a lot of parents don't get that. Story 14. Creating an environment where you tell your kids their feelings aren't valid just because they aren't the same as yours, or the kid processes their emotions differently than you. Angrily telling your kids they're too sensitive, dramatic, theatrical, hormonal, etc. is just going to mess up your kid and encourage them to bottle up emotions to avoid upsetting you, and is going to lead to major communication issues. Also, constantly pushing an intelligent or self-motivated child to work harder and harder to do better? You're setting your kid up to be a perfectionist which can be incredibly damaging to his or her mental health in the long run. Story 15. Not stopping when your child says stop. Kids who have parents that don't respect their boundaries always seem to end up being the biggest jerks and bullies because they've learned they don't have to respect other people's feelings. My dad would squeeze my knee to tickle me, but it would quickly turn painful and he wouldn't stop until I cried. I would beg him to stop, but he wouldn't until I got to that point. That's not tickling. Story 16. When I was four, my parents adopted a kitten. Of course, I had never seen anything quite so delightful before, and I could barely keep my hands off the little furball. 
So about two or three days passed. I get up in the morning and walked out and asked, where's the kitten? And my parents told me that he died, implying that my roughhousing had killed it. I was terrified to touch an animal for several years after. In fact, they had simply given the kitten back to the people they got it from. This is a cruel thing to do to anyone. I'm appalled just reading this. This made me sad. Story 17. Not having them do chores. My parents pushed me to be an academic, so doted on me hand and foot as a kid to make more room for study. When you're too young and too stupid to know any better, you think it's a blessing. When I moved out to uni, I didn't really know how to clean, when to clean, what to clean with, how to wash clothes and how to get them dry, etc. The only thing I could do is cook and binge drink. That is no way to bring up a kid, and it's a steep learning curve doing all the stuff for the first time in your early 20s. It sounds like a super lame answer, but make sure every kid does their fair share of chores. I did have to do chores, but I couldn't make any decisions for myself. And all of a sudden, they thought I was just going to do everything right with no experience. So I can see how that would really apply to more tangible things too. Kids have to learn. Story 18. Treating your young child as a friend you're venting to. It's extremely traumatic to read your parents' diary. There's a thing called covert incest. Grossest name ever. Covert incest, also known as emotional incest, is a type of abuse in which a parent looks to their child for emotional support that would normally be provided by another adult. Story 19. Telling them that the family members who are mean to them or neglect them, love them. And he does love you, you know. Well, dang, it doesn't feel like it. Maybe if he loved me, he should show it instead of insulting everything I say or do. This is how it is in my house. My mother is the best mom I could have asked for, but she refuses to see that my dad is mentally abusing and mocking all of his kids because he is always nice to her. She says, friends will come and go, family lasts forever. But what is the point of having a family member forever when they're the last person you'd like to have around? Story 20. Discouraging them from asking questions. Yes, it can be annoying to keep hearing, but why daddy slash mommy? But I've met far too many adults who admit they stopped asking questions because as a kid their parents would shut them up or be like, there he or she goes again asking questions again. Inquisitive minds need that fostered. Another good strategy to help develop creativity and problem solving while not shutting down the questioning is when your kid asks you a question them, ask them, what do you think? Or why do you think it is that way? Especially if it's something that doesn't have a factual answer. My parents used to do that to me as a kid. Definitely one of the best ways to answer questions you might not have the answer to. Story 21. Anytime a child is playing with a child of the opposite gender and they respond, ooh, who's your boy slash girlfriend? That stuff completely stopped me from even speaking to girls until darn near high school. I just saw this happen in front of my eyes not too long ago. My aunt started teasing my 12-year-old cousin because she found out a girl he was friends with had a little crush on him. Well, that friendship ended right then and there. My cousin was obviously super embarrassed. Of course, my aunt made the big announcement in front of a bunch of people. I was so mad at my aunt. Like, what the frick did she expect? I'm all for a bit of teasing, but when it comes to stuff like that, it's just far too embarrassing, especially for younger kids. Story 22. To tag on to that, never treating your children as adults. My girlfriend is 23, and despite being entirely independent of her family, her mom treats her like a child still. As in, too immature to make her own decisions, inferior to her slash not being equal. She was recently told to learn her place. Invalid in feelings, emotions, etc. This invalidates her self-worth, her opinions, her views, and stances, etc. It is wildly damaging and extremely toxic. She can't hold an adult conversation, and it's extremely frustrating. Story 23. Not having a life of your own beyond being a parent. Your child isn't responsible for your happiness. You are. If you build your entire sense of self-worth around your child, one, there's a good chance your child will grow up to resent the pressure. Two, you're setting up an example for them to be codependent in their own relationships. Story 24. Sticking through a toxic freaking relationship for the kids. It doesn't help. Part ways. Be good parents. Spend quality time together with the kids. But don't stay together and freaking hate your lives under the guise of it being for the kids. We pick up on your stuff. It's a terrible example to set. I agree. It's a lot better to split and be co-parents for the kids than sticking through it and making them and yourself suffer. Story 25. The belief that they won't remember because they're young. I remember. I don't quite remember all the words my mom said to me or all the specific things she did to me when I was younger, but I remember how she made me feel. That doesn't go away. You may forget what you said, but they will never forget how you made them feel. Carl W. Buckner. Story 26. Telling kids they have to finish their plate. Sometimes there's too much food. I was overeating for years and it took a lot of work to break the habit and shed the extra weight. Story 27. Being overprotective as a parent or just not listening to your children. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe for more videos to come or else this spider will be in your bed tonight.